Bolts Nation, welcome to another episode of Bolts Block Party Live. Powered by our friends here at High Lie IPA. Uh, Kobe, I think uh, we've kept our word all season long when we said we were going to go big or go home with these live episodes. We started it with Julian Brisebois, then we brought in Hetty, Nikki Paul, Steven Stamkos, and now one of the absolute hottest players in the National Hockey League, Brandon Hagel, is here. Now, Hags, uh, we have to ask because we've asked. Actually, yeah, yeah, it's no, tradition. huge, huge, huge. Shut up. Yeah, we got to. We have a block party tradition. I don't know if Hags, if you know about this, but it uh, it's just started. But we like to start every episode with the national anthem. So we're just going to stand up real quick, <laughs> and uh, we're going to let you sing it. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. All right, all right. So I don't know if you guys. We're able to watch New Beginnings, and, and Hags told a story about his dad at one of the games, his junior games, his dad sang the national anthem, and it was kind of on a bet or something like that. So we thought maybe that you could sing it for us here today, just to see your singing voice. Yeah, wrong anthem, wrong anthem. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do the Canadian if you really yeah. had to. <laughs> all right, all right. Listen, Hags, thanks for joining us. Um, we like to call the uh, Bolts Block Party Bump, uh, which has happened in the last, I'd say, 10 to 12 guys that we've had on the show, they've come on the show and then they end up scoring a goal or getting the points the very next game. And then Chafee just on last week and he does it again. So tomorrow, obviously, we're going to be all eyes on you. No pressure. You know, it's not like the streak's still going. It is. So no pressure on you tomorrow night. But congratulations uh, on all the success so far. We also want to remind you guys that the question cards, now that you know Hags is here, we want you guys to uh, have a chance to ask questions. So at the end of the uh, the podcast, we'll give you guys a chance to submit those, and we will ask those questions for you before yeah. we get to factor. And fiction. there's there's no dumb questions. Like I'm gonna exhibit A of that right here. So <laughs> please please give your questions. So Sasky, we know that you Kobe have such a relationship to the Saskatoon community and Sasky boys. Is there any sort of relationship, whether that's a camp you played in or coached at with the Hagel family and the Kobe's? Is that, is like, is that at all? Well, actually, I babysit. No, I didn't babysit. Okay. <laughs> no, he's kind of like part-time, a part. Uh, he was born in Saskatchewan, but raised in Alberta, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I was uh, only Saskatchewan uh, pretty well until I was one, but my entire family is still back there, so I head there. I head that way every summer, but... Uh, so no, there's no six degrees of separation. We, we would gladly adopt him. We'll just put that <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, Brandon, I, I feel like, you know, for being such really a newcomer to our organization, I think that we've really gotten to see into your life. You've quickly become a fan favorite, like super quick here. And how important... Uh, your family is and your upbringing and, and we were all privileged to be able to watch uh, the Bolts beginning episode and, and the recharge that you, we just saw that drop today and got to see that your grandparents were here by the way Dorothy and Ray fantastic your grandma <laughs> is amazing I love to see uh, them here at the game and how engaged they are but how important the family dynamic is for you and in and, and your journey, uh, it's pretty remarkable. And, and I think we, I can speak for all of us, we thank you for allowing us to get that glimpse into your life. But talk to us about that whole Bolts beginning episode and going back home and being able to you know, showcase your friendships and your family to all of us, the Bolts Nation. Yeah, I think for myself, family's a big part of my life. Uh, obviously lucky enough to have a little niece and a little nephew, um, a younger sister and a older brother and um, family's the most important thing for me. So I thought uh, when we go do Bolts Beginnings, let's get everyone a taste of that. And that was uh, kind of the way we went with it. And also be able to show a little of my town. There's not much there, but uh, there was a bit of it to show. Um, but yeah, um, like I said, family's a huge part of my life. And um, obviously you guys are a huge part of my life as well. Support me every single day. So um, it was my privilege to be able to show show you guys a little bit of um, what I'm all about. And I mean, your dad, he he gets real emotional when he talks about you and, and the journey. And I, I love to see that, honestly, because I miss my dad. But it's amazing to see how much love he has for you and, and the hard work that he puts you through, uh, you know, making sacrifices for you and sending you off so that you could develop your game. And but it's amazing to see how he's engaged with our fan base and being mic'd up with your grandparents and stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. But talk to us a little bit about that relationship with your dad and how much he means to you. Yeah, he means uh, obviously the world for me. Um, 
growing up obviously it wasn't easy with uh with me traveling everywhere my brother traveling everywhere but my dad was with me since day one and um he always made it to every practice every game um he'd do three games a day sometimes if if my sister decided to play it depended on the day but um yeah uh, me and him really close obviously and uh I think he loves the mic a little bit more than I do. <laughs> they, they, good, they, man. They like they got that superstar uh, movie star kind of thing about them. They, were, they seem like by the end of those episodes, your buddies and your family, they were craving the camera. Right, a little bit. It, yeah, Did you watch it? It? yeah, I watched it. I, I don't love um, hearing myself talk sometimes or <laughs> hearing people talk about me. Uh, sure. But yeah, I watched it and um, it was funny. Obviously, my dad um, loved it. My brother, he was a little dicey at the start. I thought he was going to be the good one, but. <laughs> I, I, when I was watching it, you know what I thought? The first thing I thought is, holy man, Brandon Hagel's got a lot of best friends. Yeah, really? <laughs> you know, it was like every new player, every new person they brought onto the show was like, and this is my best friend. And I was like, dude, you got, you're like a popular dude. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, I just moved all over the place when I was a younger kid. I went from, um, in high school, I went from grade nine ten eleven twelve at four different schools so um was able to meet a ton of people and um obviously i love to stick close with them i never want to get that uh um you're too good now so um i want to keep all those guys tight that's a huge part of me just like my family is hey so what about like you you moved away super young and, and we've covered that a little bit but was that hard like I, I imagine it was was there ever times when you were homesick and you're like why am I doing this? Or was your, your eye always on the prize? Like, this is going to get me to the next level. Yeah, I mean, um, my first year I moved away, I remember at one point um, I called my dad and my mom. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if this is for me. Um, I was homesick and I got homesick since I was a little kid. So um, it was one of those things you go to the grandparents and three or four days is good enough for me and I'll, I'll take my own bed with my family. But uh yeah, over the years, um, it was hard my first year, and then uh, you get comfortable, you get a great billet family, and I was fortunate enough to to have one of those, and um, they over over time uh, it got a lot better. See, I know like that's different in the hockey world because I know in the high school football world, right? They really kind of shun away from people moving so that they're in a district or they're able to play in a certain uh, group or, or a league. Uh, I feel like that's different in the hockey world if you were able to move and go live with a different family so that you were closer to those environments. Like, is that, I mean, it seems like that's totally different from the high school football world. Am I wrong in that assessment? Well, and you have to remember, like, kind of places where Brandon and me grew up, like, it's fairly rural. You know, we're kind of a ways from a center. Like, I know you, you uh, went to Fort Saskatchewan to play AAA. <laughs> Uh, it was a similar situation for me. Like, you know, my, my parents couldn't drive hour plus for me to go practice and play with another team. I actually had to move away for that to happen. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, that was the hardest part, but uh, um, it was, I was fortunate enough that I only played an hour and a half down the road also. So it wasn't, it wasn't too far. So they were able to come whenever I really needed them to be there. Um, so that definitely helped a lot. It wasn't like I couldn't come every six months. It was uh, my dad obviously would make most weekends and would be able to hang out with them for a bit. Family is so important. So let's fast forward. Obviously, we kind of know the journey, how you got here. You signed that eight year deal back in August of 2023. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, give him the man some love. Give him his flowers. So, Brandon, what does that do for your mindset, knowing that, you know, you're locked into a city for almost the next decade chapter of your life? What does that do for you when you hear that? Yeah, for me, um, I'll be 34 and hopefully have a family and some kids. But uh, <laughs> other than that, no, it's it's uh, incredible. I think my journey to the NHL was uh, not the easiest and not the one uh, people take all the time. But for myself, uh, to solidify, solidify myself in a city like this with fans like this. Um, I've never thought I would come to Florida after coming from Canada and have a fan base like this. It's incredible and I'm uh, super grateful for that and um, no better place to live either. Obviously, um, Tampa Bay, it doesn't get much better than this. Higgs, talk us through the expand, uh, through the extension, like everything that kind of led up to it. I guess maybe the conversations, were you thinking about maybe exploring somewhere else or was your mind always set on staying here and kind of how that whole conversation with Julian went, played out? Yeah, it was, uh, it happened over the matter of three days. Um, I didn't, 
I always wanted to stay here. Um, it's a winning culture here, and I think we're going to be really good over many, many years. Obviously, the core group you guys uh, that Tampa has here is an incredible hockey players, and that's something you look at. So uh, right from the beginning, it was um, I wanted to be here, and I wanted to be here for a long time. And um, it was weird. It was I didn't think anything was coming. I know uh, Julian and and my agent had a conversation. It was kind of uh, we'll we'll just wait till things kind of play out a little bit and um so myself it was focus on the year and focus on being the best of my abilities i guess you could say and one random day <laughs> he wanted to get it done over the weekend so um for myself it was a pretty easy decision i didn't it didn't take long and um i'm grateful i'm here for eight more years so so are we yeah so are we 100 percent so talking about those elite players, uh, I had our buddy Brian Burns put together some statistics where you stand currently, because I don't know if you ever get this data. So <laughs> let us be the ones to bestow this upon you. So this is currently some stats on Mr. Hagel here. Well, he, he might be like a Stamkos guy. He might, oh, know, you might know all, all these your stats. You know all your stats. Do you all know all your stats? Uh, good luck. Okay. All right. So well, we got to ask. All right. So your 14-game point streak. Uh, it's tied for fourth longest in the NHL this season. Obviously, we know you didn't hit it, but then you got it one the next night. But that's absolutely remarkable to be in that category this season. Your 54 even strength points are tied with Austin Matthews for fifth most in the NHL currently ahead of Panarin, Marner, Nylander, and JT Miller. Four of those guys were NHL All-Stars, by the way. I just wanted to point that out. Back-to-back -back seasons of 60-plus points, and we still have a lot of hockey to play. Unbelievable. <laughs> You're currently 12th in the National Hockey League for even strength goals with 21. You are tied for second in the NHL currently with empty net goals with five. Pretty Money awesome makers. stat there. Yeah, hustler. A hustler, right? <laughs> uh, where are we at? He ranks second in the NHL currently for empty net points with eight. Leads the Lightning and is tied for 13 in the NHL with penalties drawn. That's an interesting one. Ranks tied for fifth in the NHL for goal scored by a wrist shot with 21. And your average ice time this season, 19 minutes, 23 seconds, a career high. <laughs> Unbelievable. H Higgs, of all those stats, what, what jumps out or what surprises you the most about them? <laughs> what you can surprises? Have a look. Yeah, have a look. yeah, is there anything that surprises you or no? Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of them, to be honest. <laughs> I, mean, I love this humble attitude. Like, I, uh, I just show up, put my skates on, and, uh, you know, do yeah, a lot of good things uh, on the ice. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, it's nice to hear sometimes, but uh, at the same time, there's some pretty special names in that, in that category. And um, for myself, it's just a privilege to be with those guys. I go out there and work my hardest every single night, and that's obvious my goal to – to be up there with those guys, even though um, we got a ton of those guys on our team. So the one that jumps out to me is penalties drawn. Yeah, and uh, I want to talk about that. You know, when I think of guys drawing penalties, I think of guys that are, you know, can get under the skin of their mm -hmm. opponents a little bit. And right. I feel like you have that element. And, uh, and, and when I watch you, you play with a lot of energy, but you're not afraid to talk out there. And you seem like you might get under guys' skins a little bit with some chirps and stuff like that. Is oh, that, yeah. Is that how you, a good description of your game out there a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. But usually when I'm saying something, I'm not sure what I'm saying, to be honest. <laughs> I love when I'm asking I mean, that question. You're like licking your lips. You're like, yeah. <laughs> I can't you were mic'd up on Recharge, so we did hear you are pretty vocal on the bench. I mean, chirping at the guys, you know, making sure you got, you're, you're being heard, you're encouraging, you're chirping at the refs a little bit. So you're pretty vocal out there, man. And I, and I think those are qualities of leadership. I mean, what do you feel makes a good leader? Yeah, I, I think for myself, when it comes to that type of stuff, it just gives me engagement to the hockey game. Um, it it pulls me into the fight, and hopefully I'm pulling other guys into the fight as well. I think that's only really reason. If I'm not talking, i um, probably not playing well, to be honest. So, um, But for myself, yeah, it's, that's just a part of my game. I'm um, emotional. I'm competitive. I want to win, and um, I guess that that's a little bit of me showing that. Talk to us about how your role has uh, developed, you know, in the continuity that you're currently having with the lines that you're on. Yeah, I uh, shuffle around here and there, but uh, obviously Tony, incredible player, and uh, we know what our job is out there, and obviously getting the opportunity to play with um, the leading point guy in the league is uh, to put your stick on the ice and good things are going to happen usually. 
So is that the key to playing with Kucherov? Because, you know, not always do good players are able to have chemistry with other good players. And it seems like you do have chemistry with Kucherov. Is there certain keys that you have to do when you were playing with that guy? Yeah, I think for myself, I know when I came into the NHL, I always wanted to play. My goal was to always play. I want to play a lot of minutes just as everyone else does on the ice. And I knew it's very, very hard to be a skill guy in the NHL. There's very few of them. There's very um, high, high end guys like Nikita Kucherov and Braden Point, Steven Stamkos. Those guys are Hall of Famers. They're going to do many things. And for myself, I knew if I wanted to have the opportunity to play with those guys, it was go out there, work as hard as you can and get the puck back and good things are going to happen. And that's kind of what I do. And obviously, um, it, sh it shows a little bit. That's why I can play with those guys. I think for myself, it's getting pucks back, and getting to the best, getting it in the hands of the best player on the ice. And um, he's going to make stuff happen. What do you feel you're doing? Because, again, we've all heard it that the success really comes from the stuff you're doing off the ice, right, and the stuff you're doing behind the scenes. And everybody talks about Nikita Kucherov and his work ethic and how much work he puts in, the stuff you don't see. What are some of those things that you've adapted or some of those things you, you personally have also adapted into your game? Um, yeah, I mean, getting to play with guys like that, you kind of just – watch what they do and the little things that they do on the ice and you can kind of grow off of those things whether it's um the way he shoots the puck is incredible he can shoot the puck when his hips are facing the the net and the puck's three feet behind him not many people notice that but that's a an, an very hard thing to do and the the things he does i mean you just try those in practice obviously i got a few years left before i get there because um it's funny i'll go out there sometimes and work on the shot and i'm like oh <laughs> this is tough. Like, maybe I should just move on to something else. Right. I don't know if I'm getting it to that level. But yeah, just, just like I said, picking up off the leadership of those guys, Stammer, Hetty, um, Cooch, Pointer. Um, those are guys I look up to. I've looked up to before I was even in the NHL. So um, I just continue to do that today. I got another kind of nerd hockey question, and I get to ask it because I'm a host of the podcast. But uh, <laughs> You you're play winger. Did you ever play center? Were you ever a centerman, or were you always straight winger all the way through up? Um, pretty much straight winger the whole time. I played when I was younger in, like, um, I don't know what they call it now, U16, U15, um, stuff like that. But as soon as I got to the junior level, I played on the wing, and um, ever since then, um, I've played there. So you've obviously played with some of our younger guys, too, like obviously Mitchell Chafee, Crozier, Lilleberg. Uh, how do you see those guys currently fitting into the game and into the system? That what things are you seeing yourself? Yeah, they're incredible. It's it's not easy. Um, I can speak from getting traded here. It wasn't easy coming up uh, to a winning team and a team that's just had so much success over the last decade. Um, it's nerve wracking. It's um, trying to get in, fit in, not knowing many people. Um, these guys are doing incredible. Obviously, Lily. Um, few big hits out there that's yeah. always fun to watch that's, yeah man that's how you get the fans attention um chafee has been incredible that guy um works hard and you can tell that he's a competitor and wants it and um crow obviously um he's doing incredible things he's great at moving the puck shooting the puck and getting things out and um those are good things to see from our perspective and i'm sure from a fan's perspective so with the trade deadline being i guess friday mm-hmm is this year kind of different for you than it's been in the past? You know, you're, you have your extension and you're not kind of looking over your shoulder wondering, am I going to be playing somewhere different tomorrow? Yeah, it was, uh, it's funny because um, I was probably doing this the day before I left Chicago. I had no idea I was getting traded. I remember the coach saying that uh, it's something along the lines, if you trade Brandon Hagel, then I don't know what kind of rebuild we're having. So I'm like, mm. oh, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Had a great couple more sleep. months on my lease. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> had a couple more. Uh, had a good sleep that night. Finished more than skate, and uh, I remember it was someone called me in, and I'm like just thinking to myself, I'm getting ready to go on the road, and uh, I get called in. He goes, uh, "Come with me," and I'm like, "What?" I'm like, mm. I look at him. I'm like, "Traded?" He goes, I'm "Like, all right." Well, I go up there, say bye, and he goes, uh, "Yeah, we've traded you, but we can't tell you where." I'm like. <laughs> But you're going to have a good chance of winning the Stanley Cup. So I'm like, all right, okay. well, okay, like, I guess. Um, so I go home and sit there for a couple hours, and I think it was my mom that called me, and she's like, you're going to Tampa. I'm like, oh, 
Where'd you hear Wait. that? <laughs> <laughs> so your, your mom told you where you were getting traded. Yeah. Wait, yeah. So how, where did she find out? Yeah, just the internet. The Twitter. The, the yeah. Twitterverse. Yeah. yeah. Was we that, we like, can't tell uh, you, but, but we can mom. tell everybody on the internet. Everybody on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Just hold this secret from Brandon Hagel for a little bit longer. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, obviously at that time, I'm like, oh, man, there's some there's some freezing cold places out there that yeah. I wouldn't want to go. But uh <laughs> We'll see, I guess. So um, I had the jitters for a couple hours there and then uh, found out it was tap. I mean, it just came off of back-to-back Stanley Cups. So um, what a better place to go. Did your stomach drop a little bit when you when you kind of knew, like, oh, boy, and then they told you you got traded? Was that like a stomach drop moment for yeah, you? Yeah, it was. It was uh, – I've never been traded in my life. I played for Red Deer for four years. I came to Chicago, was there for um, – three or four years and um so it was a comfortability thing and had the time where it takes a little bit and then usually when you get traded to a team you know a few people and I didn't know a single guy Mm. so um Man. That was tough, but um obviously some of the guys in that dress room and uh there's a reason why they win win today is because of those guys in that dress room, their leadership and welcoming welcome guys so everything good. happens for a reason yeah. my man i believe when, that when i got traded i went into my closet and i looked at my winter coats <laughs> and i'm like i'm not gonna need you i'm not gonna need you <laughs> shorts swimsuits yes here we go love it man so let's switch it up a little bit it seems uh, also you got a love for the game of golf and it seems your golf game is pretty solid right and we've heard that we've got a pretty good golf group here uh with the bolts so my question is not really so much golf related but i need to know what are the mandatory snacks in Hag's golf cart? Um, probably a Michael Ultra. Okay. And um, that's like a Powerade, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, probably a hot dog at the ninth. Hot dog, Glizzies. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, healthy on the course. Gotta love nothing, it, man. Nothing hey, it works for Phil Kessel. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sure did, man. So you obviously, um, we were talking before, because again, you said you got here, you didn't really know anybody, and you didn't really know good places to eat around Tampa. Like a good spot was you'd walk around and find a subway. So <laughs> you've had some time now in Tampa. What are some of your, uh, you know, things you like to do off the ice or some of the spots you like to frequent? Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, we have a lot of guys on the team that have uh, kids and stuff like that so it's not easy for them so it's usually me and tony finding our way around and <laughs> um i don't i don't know we go um i mean boulon's always nice yep. um but to be honest we don't we don't go out a ton for dinners you get uh you go on the road and you have that every night before a game usually you got to find your way around to dinner so um when you get home it's kind of let's relax and maybe a, maybe a home-cooked meal maybe i can text one of the guys see if they're they're willing to make invite me plate. over and make me play. <laughs> is Sorelli still cooking up his chicken parmesan, or is that uh, That's still like on the table? one every year. <laughs> one every year. Okay. It's like Christmas dinner. Okay, I got it. <laughs> All right, so do we have questions, Breezer? I know we, we've got some from the crowd. We obviously want to get to some of your guys' questions before we get into fact or fiction. Oh, we got quite a few here. Brendan, are you ready? Here we go. I think so. Madison, age nine, what is the best prank you ever pulled on a teammate? Oh man, that is a good one. Um, I'm not much of a a prankster myself, but uh, I remember one year we were in Edmonton actually, and um, this is when I was on Chicago. But uh, I think everyone knows the name of Mark Andre Fleury. I I come out, I um, put my getting to go home from morning skate, and I put my uh, my um, suit back on, and I go to put my hand in my pocket, and they're tied up with I don't, I don't know what he did but uh couldn't get in there so um that was a tough one on myself but for myself I'm not much of a prankster I uh probably the one getting pranked to be honest <laughs> all right good answer Jessica and Kristen want to know what's your favorite thing to do on your days off days off um if there's a couple of days in between I think it's it's golfing um that's always fun it gets Gets you outside, gets you in the sun, but uh, other than that, I'm probably rotten on my couch. <laughs> Did you hit any uh, courses the last couple of days? I know we've had a few days off here. No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Chilling. I didn't this last couple of days, but uh, maybe He's catching fish. Yeah, yeah. no, right. I Coop's got catch. nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> okay, well, that was one of my factor fiction questions, Kobe. You just ruined it, man. <laughs> All right, Trevor wants to know: Before you were a Bolt, who was your favorite and least favorite Bolts player to play against? 
Oh, uh, great question, favorite Trevor. Trevor. Who'd you like playing? Yeah. Oh wow. Um, they, I hated playing them to be honest because <laughs> we just lost every time and they were <laughs> way too good. Um, so you just going in. Hopefully you got out of there dash one. Maybe even if you're lucky. But uh, fa favorite player to play against uh, probably Cooch because you just got a front row seat <laughs> to it all <laughs> right <laughs> hopefully you weren't li lined up against and least at the time I would have to say Hetty man that guy's big and just stick <laughs> and <laughs> that was just hard love it all right Jessica wants to know uh, who on the team would you not want to be locker room DJ before or after a game great question <laughs> <laughs> the DJ right now Mikey Samar <laughs> <laughs> what is Mikey Asamon's uh, playlist sounding like? Like, what's he got on that? Oh, um, it's like a rave in there. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's a lot sometimes. What, what would Hags have as the DJ? What, what kind of music? I know you and um, really went to Drake. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I don't know music very well, but if you play a song, I'll know it. Okay. But uh, I'm, I'm I like country. I'm 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 a country. I like that's Jonas, Chafee. They're all country guys, man. Love it. All right. Do you miss living with Tony? <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> that felt very hard to admit. Yeah. Right there. No, it was good. I uh, had a little buddy, but uh, I also live in a <laughs> condo, so it was either we were on the couch or. Yeah, we were just with each other a lot, <laughs> yeah, to say the least. All right, Joyce wants to know, if Gasparilla was not on a game day, please, NHL, can we not? No, man, it's all another conversation. Would you go as a spectator to Gasparilla, or would you actually want to be on the lightning float throwing beads? Oh, I don't know if this is a trick question or not. It's not. not. You either <laughs> Any way you do Gasparilla is the right way. So all right, no I would love to be a spectator. I haven't been able to do it yet, so yeah. I would, I, I'm just waiting for the day that we don't have someday to Someday the NHL won't schedule a game. Yeah. We'll just, get him dressed as a pirate. I, think I mean, yeah. Hedy was I'm in. dressed. I'm in. That was awesome. All right, and finally, Cheryl wants to know, have you lost any teeth? And, bonus question, can I hang out with your grandma Dorothy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, she would love that. She would eat that up. But, uh, yeah, I've lost uh, two or three. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's hope there's no more to be lost for. All right. So here we go. I love how that answer is very vague. Like, yeah, I think I lost two or three. Like, <laughs> it's like, most people would know when they lost teeth. You know? <laughs> <laughs> very specific question. All right, Hags. This is uh, actually one more. Actually, before Hockey we players get to are that, different. Before we get to fact or fiction. And, again, we obviously know the nickname Bagel. If you could – create your own bagel flavor creation and i don't know if that's a delicacy in morinville but what would be the brendan hagel flavor creation of a bagel flavor creation wow is it like a jalapeno nacho because you play spicy or anything like anything like that just trying to give you some ideas i don't love spa spice but i like the idea okay see where you're going there um for myself yeah man oof. what's some flavor combinations you enjoy I just, Mick I'd up, probably just, Mick <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'd probably go with just, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty simple guy, but I would just go, I love a uh, bagel right out of the toaster. And then you have the melted peanut butter on there. That's, that's my go-to. Maybe like a peanut butter infused bagel flavor. I don't think they have that right now. So yeah. Axe is peanut butter. All yeah, right, yeah. here we go. Fact or fiction. These are literally true or false. Maybe some of these are. The details might be off a little bit, okay. so it's either fact or fiction here. Presented right. by our friends at High Lie IPA. Here we go. Brandon Hagel, if you were not a hockey player, you'd be either a teacher or maybe a forklift operator. True. Which one? Because um, you're good at the forklift, we saw. Yeah, it's I pretty can, good. Yeah, I'm decent with it, but I, I wanted to be a teacher. In what, like, uh, what age group, what subject do you think you'd be um, selling at? Probably high school. Really? Yeah, like general studies or like history. Science, yeah, I would math. go. I would go more history. I, I was. I was hoping to eventually get a hockey gig out of it, to be honest. But so I, I'd start history, and hopefully, I could just move over to gym class. <laughs> <laughs> Fair assessment. All right, here we go. Fact or fiction? In 2021, as part of the IIHF World Championships in Latvia, you represented Team Canada, and you guys nabbed a silver medal. Fact or fiction? That's uh, fiction. It's not true. Why? 
We won a gold medal. Gold medal, baby. The man owns a gold medal. <laughs> you threw this next one off, but he still has to answer oh, it. Oh, sorry about that. It's all right. You do it from time to time. Fact or fiction, Brandon Hagel, you caught the second biggest fish at Coop's Catch. Fiction. Did you catch the tenth biggest fish in Coop's Catch? No, I just, I was just, just the bait, really. <laughs> <laughs> Not the fisherman. Better on the golf course yeah. than on the uh, on the waters, there, Kobe. All right, and our final, unless you have one. It's always awkward when you have your captain and you're like, yeah, hey, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Three hours on the water. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing. All right, final <laughs> factor fiction, unless you have one. Um, please, I screw up them up. Brennan Hagel, you can name at least three of the five teams who have never played in a Stanley Cup final. There's five, but three have never played in a final. Fiction. You can? Can't. You can't name three. No. Can you guess? One. Expansion. Oh, Seattle. Got one. Do you guys know the others? S nope. Columbus. Seattle, Arizona, Winnipeg, Minnesota. You can take that back to uh, Paulie because he's always throwing weird stats yeah, yeah. out there. In the stat locker of the day. Room, so. I'm not a huge stat guy. I don't know much. To be honest. I just go out there. And well, play. you know your stats now. You can take this with you. You yeah. can brag in the locker room. <laughs> Bolts Nation, how about some love? The man is one of the hottest players in the National Hockey League right now. Thank you to our friends here at High Lie IPA for powering this shindig. And uh, it's Hall of Fame week this week, so a lot of exciting things happening. Uh, and we thank you for taking your time out. To, Huge uh, to spend, thank you because, yeah. you know, we know you game night. You play tomorrow, so taking the time is uh, – we really appreciate it, and I hope you guys had a good time as well. Thank you so much. Brendan Hagel right here. Thanks, Bolts guys. Block Party. One more live show coming up very soon, guys. Stay tuned. Thank you so much.